Welcome to Woodbine Racing Live, Monique Begg, alongside a very special guest, Scott Young here. Uh, win number 1,000, how does it feel? Uh, it's excellent, yeah. No, it's uh, definitely a fantastic milestone and very fortunate and uh, appreciate it a lot. Yeah, we were hoping that you would get it on our circuit here, but I mean, we still did the presentation a yeah. little bit later, but yeah, and was, even this interview a little later though. Yeah, no, it. Uh, I even won my thousandth win and got placed back, so I even had to wait a little longer to get it again too. So, I it, know. Uh, but it's okay. I, yeah, um, the presentations are great. So, so in the monitor here, we're going to pull up a replay of that win. Okay. Uh, talk us through it. I know uh, the quarter times were great for you, thirty-one and one second quarter, and then you got a good breather on the front end here. When did you feel you had this one in the bag, if you ever did? Yeah, she, um, I would even say right here, this mare is, uh, she's been fantastic for me for the last two years. I've, uh, you know, got to drive her almost every week at uh, between Flamborough and London in the top preferred class. And uh, she can leave the gate so fast that, uh, you know, and then you can kind of just control the race after that. But uh, I had Natasha first up and I thought the, the only horse I really had to worry about was on my back. So I thought if I can just, keep backing into her and control it as much as I could. Uh, should be home free, just stay out of the pylons. That was all. Was this something that you were monitoring? Were you counting down to get win number 1,000? Are you looking way further into the future? I'm a stats guy, so I knew it was coming, yeah. But it, um, you know, I, I, I didn't look into it too much, like started driving any different or anything. But uh, when it got to be like the last five or six wins, uh, I was definitely counting them, that's for sure. We're gonna talk about some of the bigger wins for you moving forward, but I mean, we gotta go back to the roots. The first WEG win, mm -hmm. I asked you when you got in here, I said, did you remember who was with? And yeah, I do, yeah. Maybe you did. Yeah. It, uh, <laughs> I was actually fortunate to drive the mare for my dad because I didn't have my A license at the time. And uh, you couldn't drive at Mohawk unless it was a paid event. And I think it was, I don't remember what series it was, but it was a leg of a series or something. So I got to drive her here. And uh, yeah, I, I, it was like my second or third ever drive here and uh, got the win out of the way. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, so it was Woodbine, pull... actually. It wasn't Mohawk. So, yeah, yeah, I know. Throwback, yeah. huh? Throw... Oh, yeah. I, I didn't go to Woodbine, though. I'm sure you I don't mind the drive. No, I didn't. No, I didn't at all. <laughs> all right, let's take a look here. Here it is. I mean, Take a look at that. Yeah, me and Keith Oliver actually were hooked wheels in the last turn, and I uh, was a little nervous there for a minute. But um, yeah, no, this. What year was it? 2011. Okay, I only got my license 2010, so that was good. But it, uh, yeah, to win a race, even even now, to win a race on the, the main circuit and to win here, it's a, it's a great feeling every time. That's for sure. I know. So long ago, 2011, and it's funny because when Chad got in here, we were in the control room. He's like, 2011? Are you sure on that? And the year, and it's like, how old was Scott during that? And I mean, yeah, I was only 19. Baby. I was yeah. only 19. Yeah, I was got my license when I was 18. The first year you can get it. So, yeah, I was definitely. Uh, people still call me a baby, but I was really a baby then. <laughs> Yeah, so, okay, all right, so biggest win we know for you, uh, that was the OSS gold win with CrossFit Mouse, but mm -hmm. I got to ask you before we get into that one, what's the one race on your bucket list? If you could only choose one, which is the must win? I can't just pick one because I have one for pace, one for trot. So obviously the Hamiltonian would be amazing. Uh, my man McClure's got that up on me right now, but uh, that would be awesome to win that one. And the Little Brown Jug's my, my favorite race on the pace because you have to be on your best two times uh, in the same day, so. Is the atmosphere that crazy? Never been? I've been, I went every year from when I was six months old till I was 18. I never missed one. And it, uh, I've been to the Gold Cup and Saucer too. And it's, obviously they're different, but it, it's fantastic. You know, you get 45,000 people on a Thursday afternoon in Ohio to show up and watch one race. It, uh, it's, it's amazing for sure. Amazing. So I teased about it a little bit. CrossFit Mouse. This is someone that Bob opted to drive the other one. Mm -hmm. I don't remember the exact name of the other horse in that race that you ended up beating in the OSS. Yeah. But I mean, how did you feel in that one? It was uh, obviously great. It, uh, you know, I was very fortunate to pick up, pick up the drive from Luke Blay and Determination. And uh, yeah, Bobby had 352. And uh, yeah, you know, he, was, he showed really well. They just purchased the Colt actually, I think, a couple weeks before this race. And uh, you know, I was able to make a nice, easy lead and just kind of control fractions from there. And he uh, come like a 28 second quarter on the end to seal the deal. So it, uh, it was definitely a great feeling. It was first ever hundred thousand dollar race I'd won. I'd been in a couple before, but uh, the first one I had ever got to win. The horse is still one for eight. And you only have yeah, that I got win. the only one. I was actually I got to drive him in the super final this year as well, and that was my first ever super final drive too. So Mouse was uh, he was pretty good to me in two thousand and nineteen. Did you have a particular game plan for something like this, or no? When it comes to for me for driving, you know, you can always have a game plan, but. Uh, Everything changes normally when the, when the wings fold, but um, you know, two-year-old Trot and Colt just 
stay trotting and get money was kind of the, the initial idea and uh, was fortunate enough to get the W. So you were talking that you went to school for broadcasting, mm -hmm. uh, broadcast journalism or just broadcasting in general? Broadcast journalism. I, uh, I got to be a guest host on Race Night on the Score when they used to do it here. And uh, I kind of asked everybody what they did for school. And, you know, it was all something to do with broadcasting. And, uh, yeah, I studied two years at Sheridan in Oakville. So I was only 17 when I graduated high school. So I wasn't even old enough to drive. So I continued that and had something under my belt just in case this didn't work. So we have a little bit of your acting debut, and are you nervous which it's going to be? Is it going to be the video that you did, or the the um, the commercial I'm talking about, oh, wait, or uh, was it the bike incident? Uh, the bike <laughs> incident's haunted me for for many years. It, uh, but it's good. It brings it even brings a smile to my face. It brings a smile to everybody else's face. So, but uh, the commercial was a lot of fun. I uh, I've actually got to be in two of them. But if I could ever uh, if I could ever do any more of those, they're they're a lot of fun. Yeah, no, it's uh, it's got a lot of views, and it's. Uh, it was just bad timing. I tried to shift rubber on rubber and hit the wall at the same time. And I was hoping the film had gone to post braid. And when I came in, James McDonald said, you know, not so much, dude. We got that on film. So, right. but it's good though. It's it's still uh, still coming up at least two or three times a year. Made sure. you famous one of those uh, yeah, for viral all the wrong, videos. For maybe. all the wrong reasons. For all the wrong reasons. <laughs> awesome. So uh, I don't know if we have a commercial here. Uh, your commercial here. I don't know if we have a clip of that. Oh, awesome. Let's take a look through that. How does it feel? Were you nervous in front of the camera a little bit? or? I uh, know. I'm not ever nervous in front of it. It, uh, it was kind of, They did a bunch of scenes with me, but they did scenes with everybody, though. So I, uh, they told me I was going to be the main guy to win the final race, which was fine. And uh, actually, the night they premiered it at Flamborough, a bunch of them that were in the commercial with me went over and watched it. And uh, I didn't. I was in the first race, so I couldn't go over and see it. And I asked them how it was, and they said, uh, they made a commercial about you, Scott. And I said, oh, really? And then I got to watch it, and it's pretty much all me. And, uh, so that was pretty cool. It uh, played in movie theaters, and yeah. it was on Sportsnet, and it was it was all over. So it was kind of cool. You and my uh, non-horse racing friends were sending me messages and stuff saying, you know, they got to see me on TV, or they That's went awesome. to the show to watch a movie, not to look at me. And So that was kind of cool. I got to be all over there for a couple months. So do you have a quote from you? So you obviously you mentioned for as long as you can remember you've wanted to drive horses and you love the challenge of doing so. So a quote from you is, I'd like to win every race I'm in, but obviously that's not going to happen. I've had races before that I thought I was going to win, but it's called a horse race for a reason. Yes. So got to ask you, are you still that critical on yourself now? Yeah, and I've even been told I, I hate when I think I drove bad. I've been told that like I thought I drove bad and people don't think I have, but I'm very hard on myself. I. Uh, I try and drive the horse, you know, the best of my ability and to their ability, but uh, it, uh, I, I, I can be a pretty good critic on myself at the odd time. I'm the same way. You got to be super critical. It yeah, motivates exactly. you to be better no, too, exactly. course, for sure. Exactly. Uh, so, what's one piece of advice that maybe you didn't know at the time that you could give to some up-and-coming drivers or someone trying to break out on the circuit? Uh, you have to show up to work. For that's sure. that's a that's a main one. You can't uh, you can't be taking too many days off and. You know, not showing up for drives and stuff like that. Show up to qualifiers, stay humble, and, uh, you know, just talk to people. People like, you know, conversation. They don't want you meeting them at the door or anything like that. You go down and talk about the horse, what they want, what they feel. And, uh, yeah, just try and be personal. Well, at least that's the way I do it. I just try and be personal with everybody and, uh, you know, just be professional about it. So obviously we've made some changes, with, most notably with the 10 horse starting second tier, mm -hmm. and we tried the added distance races, but moving forward, starting second tier, what's your thought on that with the 10 horse? Both things, I've actually had a little luck. I've had more 10 hole wins than, I've, than I had <laughs> when it was 10 wide, so um, that, that's good in that angle, and I think I won two or three of the distance races too, so I wasn't, uh, I wasn't complaining about them, but uh, I think the 10 horse trailings, it's good. It, um, it makes the nine hole very tough now, very tough, because if you were ever to, you know, maybe float out from the eight or nine hole to get a spot, that spot is filled by the ten hole now. So, but it, uh, you know, it, it makes up for different races. You see the more horses maybe get parked a little mm -hmm. bit because there's, uh, there's not as many spots. So, and I'm sure the gamblers like that too, because it makes it for different types of races. It makes it more competitive, mm -hmm. for sure. Mm -hmm. So we got to touch back to wagering. So we have a little um, graphic here of your drives on the night. Can okay. you talk us through, uh, tell the horse players who you feel particularly confident yeah, on or, or anything? Sure. Here are your drives and here's the program if you want to yeah. get in depth here. <laughs> no, that's fine. Um, the mare in the first, she's a nice little mare. I, I, um, actually, a buddy of mine, Jeff Hunt, owns her now, but I used to drive her for another friend of mine named Dan Krause. And, uh, 
you know, she, she gives 120%. She's not that big, but she, you know, she gives you all she's got anyway. So uh, she's really good to drive. So um, I like her chances in here. She's actually back in the condition climber, which is uh, where she made most of her money, actually. So I'm looking, uh, I'm looking for a pretty good effort from her tonight, actually. And of course, you're happy with the scratch of Dream Fair's Empire. Yeah, the high hole being out, that, that's really good, really good, yeah. So uh, Magical Albert, I drove him early in his career. I never, haven't drove him of late. He, um, I, so if he's the same, you know what I mean? He's, he's good to drive too. And uh, Tony Beaton's always, you know, got his horses, uh, got his horses ready to race. So that's always a good, uh, good trainer to drive for. Uh, UF Betters Hanover, Scott West has been great to me. He uh, he put me on a bunch of horses here, kind of when I started coming, and still is. So I uh, I appreciate him for sure. And but that horse has actually been really good right now. He's been racing well at Flamborough, and he's kind of got one move, so you can choose to when you want to use it, but. Um, no, he's been he's been very good too. The other one, I it, the graphic went away, so I'm not even, I'm not even <laughs> sure who it is. Uh, race five. Oh, rock this way. Yeah, I get to drive for Ben Byarjan. That's uh, exciting. It, yes, yeah. you know I get to drive for him quite a bit. You know the last two years on the B tracks, but he's threw me on a couple here. And uh, this horse won two in a row Flamro, and then one one for me here. And then last week he sat last and closed up to be fifth. So you know, inside post and uh, you know, he's got, again, he's got one kind of good move. So whenever you choose to use it, if he has it, he hopefully closes up for me. And Chad was mentioning that he was hoping that this is the one that you would talk about. Talk about. about. Yeah. And yeah. we put him on top. No, too. exactly. He, like he, uh, <laughs> even with the first start he won, or the, when he won here after Flambro, I think he was just kind of brave at the moment. You know what I mean? He kind of beat up on some of Flambro and was pretty proud of himself. So <laughs> I'm looking for another good effort from him. Uh, and the ninth, or sorry, eighth points north. Very fortunate to pick up a fur drive. Um, yeah, I've only ever won one open actually when I was, mm, again, I think it was 18 or, or 19, maybe I won a secret the weapon. Glory days. Yeah, <laughs> I won for uh, secret weapon was the horse's name. But uh, yeah, this horse was fantastic last week. He'd come a wicked back half, you know, finished second to Sintra, and Sintra's a grand circuit horse, so to be second to him's, uh, you know, he raced awesome for sure. And then my last drive, Kinder Jackson. He was 89 to one last week and finished third, so I couldn't complain about him at all. He, uh, if, he if he throws in the same effort tonight, uh, I'll be very happy. Trying to get a check again tonight. Yes, <laughs> checks down here. Well, checks anywhere are great, but down here is uh, fantastic. Gotta feel pretty good. Yeah. But thank you so much for your time. No, I appreciate good you having with me. All your drives. Thank you very much. It was interesting to find out about the broadcasting because I know last time I had Jody on here, same same type of thing that he took in school. Yeah, he went to school for it too. Yeah. yeah. So it uh, it was good though. Like I said, I was I was young and I and you know I wanted to be the next top driver, but sometimes it doesn't always work. So I want to make sure I had something maybe to fall back on if I had something else to do. It is always good to have a backup plan, yes. but I mean, right now you're killing it. Yeah, so I appreciate it very keep much. It up. Thank you so much for your time. And when we come back, we'll be back to discuss race one, early pick five and all the changes on the card.